Another massive deal to announce in the NHL. This time, it comes from the blue and white. Toronto Maple Leafs, Kyle Dubas getting it done before the NHL trade deadline. You're locked on fantasy hockey. Your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome back to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. And thank you so much for making us your first listen every day, including joining us for today's episode. Lots to discuss. Very hectic weekend so far. We are going to get to big time bets for Sunday's six game board. Connor McDavid reaches 100 points for the sixth time in his career. We, You know we have to talk about McJesus, who just keeps on lighting the lamp, setting up his teammates every single game. We're going to do a little bit more of DFS for Sunday's six-game board as well. But, of course, we have to start off with the big trade, the big news that happened over the weekend. The Toronto Maple Leafs make a trade, acquire Ryan O'Reilly and Noel Achari from the St. Louis Blues. So we're going to start there. I'm going to break down the trade and mostly be talking about the Toronto Maple Leaf side of things because that's where the meat and potatoes are of this trade. So again, I'm going to knock it down right now. Toronto receives Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Chari from the St. Louis Blues. The St. Louis Blues receive Mikhail Abramov and Adam Gaudet, a 2023 first-round pick, a 2023 third-round pick, and a 2024 second round pick from the Toronto Maple Leafs. They also retain 50% of O'Reilly's contract as well. So that's big news for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But this is also a three-team trade. It's a three-way trade right now. And the Minnesota Minnesota Wild receive a fourth round pick from the Toronto Maple Leafs in 2025. And they also, as well, retain 25% of Ryan O'Reilly's contract. So big news from the Toronto Maple Leafs, St. Louis Blues, and Minnesota Wild. I think Minnesota just got added into this because the Leafs needed some more wiggle room with the with the cap salary and what's going on before the trade deadline and the playoffs. So they get the Minnesota Wild to retain 25% of Ryan O'Reilly's contract. But let's talk Toronto because that's where the big news is. This team, to me, honestly, overnight has changed and for the better. This makes their entire forward core uh, a lot more balanced um, and, and, uh, you know, definitely got some additions in in the areas of the ice that they needed help with. They needed a veteran guy who could take face-offs. O'Reilly's great in the face-off circle, 55% on the season. And he's always over 55 or 54% every single year in the face-off circle. He's one of the best in the league right now. Nolachari, a guy who adds a lot of depth to the bottom six forward group. But with Ryan O'Reilly, like there's no denying it, having a bad season, playing for a bad team. I think that's just the way it goes. You know, the Leafs acquire a player over the span of his career. He's now 33 years old. Over the span of his career, has consistently put up 50 to 60 points every single year. He's also won a Stanley Cup. He's been the captain of that team for many years as well. He can help this team win, win right now. And, and and yeah, he might be on the back nine of his career right now. Like I said, 33 points, only 19 points on the year. But he was playing for a really bad team. The amount of losing streaks and up and down roller coaster rides that the St. Louis Blues have gone on this year is astronomical. It's crazy how how up and down their season has been. You know, you got Jordan Bennington's antics. Tarasenko was traded a few week uh, a week ago, and now Ryan O'Reilly uh, and Nola Chari are the next guys in line that were sent out. This is a rebuild stage for the St. Louis Blues. They're looking to get younger. They're looking to get a little faster, and this is exactly what they needed to do. They needed to move on from Ryan O'Reilly, and they get a couple picks and a couple of young guys in return from the Toronto Maple Leafs. But I think this is exactly the trade that the Toronto Maple Leafs needed to make because, you know, the New York Islanders – New York Islanders and the New York Rangers were the first teams to beat any team to the punch, getting the two top or two of the top three goal scorers out there on the trade block. Timo Meyer still out there. And 
yeah, there was rumors that the Leafs could have gone out and get and got him and were, were looking into Timo Meyer, but I think this Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Chari trade is a little bit better. Yeah, you can bolster up your top six forward group, which again, if they were able to go out go out and get Timo Meyer, then that's absolutely incredible. But this trade for Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Chari balances out the rest of the groups and the lines in the t- in the forward core. You know, Ryan O'Reilly can you know, he can center that third line or he can jump up on the left wing and play with Tavares and Mitch Marner. So there's a lot of different capabilities and chemistry sets that uh, that Sheldon Keefe can kind of work with and play with. But if Ryan O'Reilly is going to start as a centerman on the third line, you move Cali Yarncroak up to play with Tavares and, and Mitch Marner, which he's played well with them so far this year. You create a bottom six centerman who you can rely on who's over 55 percent in the face-off circles so far this year and every single year pierre angval has played a lot better uh you know you, you can utilize alex kerfoot in that role as well i think him being in the bottom six really makes sense for the toronto maple leafs moving forward and then you've got other guys like nola chari who adds into the lineup who brings that physical capability that the leafs really need because they needed this type of player. The Leafs are bottom 10 in the league in hits so far this year, and they're going to need that physicality in the playoffs. When you go up against the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Boston Bruins, Florida Panthers, doesn't really matter what team you go up against, uh, up against, you need to have some sort of physical capability. And we've seen it a little bit more this year with their top guys, Austin Matthews, John Tavares getting into the mix a little bit, Mark Giordano, of course, but Nolachari is one of those guys that can go out and put up six hits, five hits a night. He has 170 hits on the season, 18 points as well this year. He can shoot the puck a little bit. He's got he's at a shooting percentage of 13 and a half right now, which I think is a career best or close to a career best for Nolachari. So I really like this addition. The Leafs may have gave up uh, a little bit too many draft picks in this trade, but I think it was necessary at the end of the day because you get the St. Louis Blues, you get the Minnesota Wild to retain some of Ryan O'Reilly's contracts. And in that case, it doesn't make the Leafs quite done yet before the trade deadline. I think there's still one more thing they're missing. They need some help on the blue line. There's a couple of D-men that they're still looking into. John Klingberg, Jake McCabe for a couple uh, for example, but this is a great trade for the Toronto Maple Leafs. May have given up too many picks, but had to get it done because it's a win now mentality. You don't, you're not looking for the future. You've got your core Marner, Nylander, Matthews. You've got a couple of young guys down the lineup as well. Uh, Matthew Nyes. You can, you can afford to give up some draft picks because you, you have a win now mentality and now it's time to get past the first round for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So great trade. I don't think it's over for the Toronto Maple Leafs just yet. I think they're going to bolster up as best as they can on their blue line because they're going to need some grit physicality or some skill to help them get past the first round, get, get help them get past that hump over the Tampa Bay lightning Boston Bruins and make a deep playoff run. I think this gives them a fairly, fairly good chance at that after Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Chari. Great job by Kyle Dubas. Um, doesn't, doesn't fail to surprise me whatsoever. Wasn't sure when this was going to happen or if this was going to happen, but he gets it done And I'm here for it. We are going to continue on the topic. A little bit of a shorter episode for Sunday. We're going to talk about Connor McDavid, 100 points. Some DFS targets for Sunday as well as big time bets. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. Like I said, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode. Flying Solo, I'm your host, Steel Roden. Forgot to say that off the top, but at this point, you know my voice. You recognize me. I'm your boy, Steel Roden, hitting you with the puck line guru over here. Connor McDavid, 100 points for the sixth time in his career. He's only played in the NHL for eight seasons now, so he has a, a record, a percentage which is absolutely incredible and honestly just it, it, to, to witness this firsthand, uh, the hockey that he's playing, the skill level, the showcase that he sh- he's showing the fans, the, 
and, and hockey fans out there. It's, it's absolutely incredible to watch him step on the ice every single time and absolutely dominate the, uh, the rest of the opponents out there. doesn't matter what team, doesn't matter who he's playing, where he's playing. He will get the job done. 100 points for the sixth time in his career. And he did it in 56 games. Uh, like, he's on, a, he's on a cheat code level type of thing. Like, this is one of those video games, like, where there's one broken player. You continue to use him and utilize him for the same hockey move or the same move where he continues to score points. It, he's a cheat code. A cheat code. That's all there is to it. He has a hundred or he has 26 games to reach 150 points, which I think is a little bit difficult. I know that there's been talk about there where whether he gets to 150 or not this season. He has 26 games to record 49 more points. He's at 101 points right now, two assists the other night in the 5 4 overtime loss or 5 4 shootout loss to the New York Rangers, but 101 points on the season, 26 games to try and reach 150 points, which I don't think is possible. 49 points in 26 games seems a little bit much, but again, it's Connor McDavid. He's definitely capable of it. I think there's no question he gets to 130, maybe 135 points at the end of the season. He's putting up two points almost every single game. And honestly, when all things are done and his career is wrapped up, Hopefully by then he has won a couple of Stanley Cups because this will that will definitely matter in the debate and, and in question. But at the end of his career, he truly might be considered the best player to ever step on the ice, the best hockey player that we have ever seen uh, at this point in time. He is just on a God level, next level type of tier and continues to impress every single season, doing whatever he can to secure the Edmonton Oilers a playoff spot this season. So we'll see what happens, but six times, six out of eight times in his NHL career, he's finished or he's had over a hundred points on the season. Absolutely incredible. So got to show some love and kudos out to Connor McJesus out there, just getting it done on every single level against every single team. One of the best, if not the best hockey player to ever live right now. We go. We are going to get to big time bets. Six games on the board. I do want to talk about some daily fantasy, some DFS hockey for you guys out there. Six games on the schedule. Two teams in particular that I am targeting, that I am looking at. I'm just bringing up the schedule right now so I can take a look at the other matchups. But, you know, you've got the St. Louis Blues against the Ottawa Senators. I think that could be a game you could target for the Ottawa Senators-wise, obviously. You've got Nashville Predators and Minnesota Wild. I feel like that could be a little bit of a low-scoring game. It's been low-scoring for the Wild recently, and I don't know. Nashville Predators have just been a little bit off since the NHL All-Star break. Oilers and Avalanche as well. Jets and Devils. Those aren't the games I'm looking at. You can target those, but I think it's a little bit of a difficult matchup. The two games that I am taking a look at, Toronto Maple Leafs against the Chicago Blackhawks. I think without question that is the first game that everyone should be looking at uh, for obvious reasons. I'm going to bring up the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs schedule right now as well, because I know they played the Chicago Blackhawks recently and they're, you know, probably got the easiest schedule moving forward, uh, moving forward for the remainder of the season. But we're talking about the Chicago Blackhawks. They come off a 4-3 overtime win against the Ottawa Senators the other night. And honestly, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks are still one of the worst teams in the league right now. Uh, not much you can do uh, about how bad they are. The Leafs did beat them 5-2 on February 15th, Wednesday, last week. Or just a couple days ago, actually. So they're back in Toronto for the second meeting. They won 5-2 against the Chicago Blackhawks. I think you can easily target John Tavares, Mitch Marner, if Ryan O'Reilly is playing on that second line with Tavares and throw him in there as well, uh, definitely target their best players. Ryan O'Reilly, John Tavares, Mitch Marner. I think you get Ryan O'Reilly at a cheap price, 4000 maybe 4500 because he's playing with a new team. 
uh, and then maybe throw Morgan Riley or Rasmus Sandin on the back end. But I'm also looking at the Arizona Coyotes and Columbus Blue Jackets matchup as well. Johnny Goudreau missed yesterday's game with a lower body injury. He is day-to-day. I don't think he'll be playing in Sunday's matchup against the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, just because it's a back-to-back situation, it's a lower body day-to-day. I just don't think it happens. So I'm targeting the Arizona Coyote players. Clayton Keller, Nick Schmaltz have been tearing it up recently. Back-to-back goals, two-point games. They're doing everything they can. Throw in Lawson Kraus, who here and there, he's scoring goals right now, but here and there, he will tear it up. A couple of shots, a couple of hits, and score couple goals as well on top of that maybe a goal and an assist but Kraus you can get at a very valuable price uh and he brings a lot to the table Shane Gosh Bear and Jakob Chikrin are not in the lineup right now so maybe throw in UC Valamaki on the back and who has stepped up and played pretty decent if not him JJ Moser is a good look Karel Vimelka played the night before he played yesterday against the the uh, LA Kings so it is going to be Connor Ingram in the net so if you're looking for a goalie, I would either be going towards Ilya Samsonov of the Toronto Maple Leafs because he has a great record at home playing the Chicago Blackhawks and won against them last week, or Connor Ingram, who, again, is playing against a, a very beaten up Columbus Blue Jackets team. He had a very incredible, uh, amazing shutout, one nothing win against the Tampa Bay Lightning a few days ago. So those are my DFS targets for Sunday six-game board. Toronto Maple Leafs and the Arizona Coyote players you can find a ton of value up and down the lineup. Again, Toronto Maple Leafs, John Tavares, Mitch Marner. John Tavares has been lighting up the lamp recently. If Ryan O'Reilly is playing on that second line, throw him on there too. And Morgan Riley on the back end, Ilya Samsonov, Clayton Keller, Nick Schmaltz, guys like Lawson Kraus, Yuso, UC Val- uh, Valimaki, as well as Connor Ingram if you're not feeling Ilya Samsonov. Let's get over to big time bets real quick. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget we are free and available on your favorite podcast platform, including YouTube. Make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We appreciate all the love, all the support. And make sure you're leaving some comments. If you have any questions about, you know, maybe a trade you're trying to, to, uh, or a player you're trying to trade for, what it might take to acquire him. Uh, what you think about these big time bets, DFS targets, whatever question statements, leave them on the YouTube channel. We will get back to you as soon as possible, right when we see them. Thank you so much for all that our listeners do for us every single day. Big time bets, six game on the board. You already know where I'm going with my first two picks. First pick, Maple Leafs on the money line against the Blackhawks. They won 5-2 the other night against the, uh, a couple days ago against the Blackhawks. I think it's easy money. 5-2 win against the Blackhawks, 3-0 win against uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets, 5-1 win against Washington. I think it's safe to consider that this is the easiest part of the schedule for the Leafs. Take Leafs on the puck line. That's where all the money will be. Coyotes on the money line against the Blue Jackets. Don't know what the odd is right now, but I think they're going to be pretty good odds. They are at home. Should probably be the favorites, and rightfully so. I see this game going in the Coyotes' favor. Money line, Blue Jackets. Blue Jackets just have way too many injuries to continue to win these type of games. Lock of the night. Taking the Ottawa Senators on the money, money line against the St. Louis Blues. St. Louis Blues have nobody left pretty much to kind of, or okay, I'm not going to say nobody. They got Cairo. They got Krug. They got Thomas. They got a couple of guys. Don't want to say nobody, but they're without Tarasenko. They're without Ryan O'Reilly. They're without Nolichari. And Jordan Bennington also played the night before. I think this is just an easy win for the Senators. Senators on the money line against the St. Louis Blues. That is my lock of the night. Those are the bets. Those are the DFS targets. Talked about the NHL trade, Toronto Maple Leafs and St. Louis Blues. A lot of Toronto. This is pretty much Toronto Maple Leaf podcast episode today. Uh, But yeah, those are the bets. Those are the DFS targets. Let us know in the comments what you think about everything on today's episode. You have any questions and thank you so much for making the locked on fantasy hockey podcast. Your first listen every single day. We are available Monday through Friday, seven o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. You can find us on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with just myself, steel road and your boy puck line guru. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there, and we shall see you back here again tomorrow.